Muy buenos días. A very good morning. I declare open the meeting of the ad hoc committee of the General Assembly for the announcement of voluntary contributions to the United Nations Relief and Works Agency for Palestine refugees in the Near East. Secretary General Antonio Guterres, Your Excellencies. Mr. General, Mr. Pierre Krahenbull, uh, I am truly very grateful for your presence here today at this very important meeting. Last September, at the ministerial meeting on UNRWA, I was encouraged by the many countries that pledged support for this essential agency. Together, we managed to raise over $200 million in six months, helping to ensure that schools and other basic services were able to continue. But sadly, we find ourselves meeting again today in the context of a serious funding shortfall. In 2019, UNRWA needs $1.2 billion to deliver its regular programs to 5.4 million Palestine refugees, 1.5 million people of whom have been affected by humanitarian emergencies. The current projected shortfall is $211 million. And for this, UNRWA provides health care, housing, social services, financial and emergency assistance for over 20% of the world's refugees. It runs over 700 elementary and preparatory gender balanced schools that teach more than half a million girls and boys with a focus on education for peace, human rights, and tolerance. It, is, it also provides technical vocational training and higher education for over 7,700 students and offers scholarships that give young Palestine refugees the chance to attend university. This really is value for money. Last year, UNRWA managed to bridge a bigger shortfall of $146 million, thanks to the generous support of member states, as well as over $90 million in internal cost-saving measures, and the agency continues to undertake reforms to improve its efficiency and effectiveness. So I urge member states to consider two things. First, what would be the consequences of UNRWA seizing its work for half a million girls and boys, for 5.4 million refugees, and for the wider region and for the world? And second, have we, as an international community, done enough to honor the spirit of past General Assembly resolutions in which we establish UNRWA to provide for Palestine refugees in Gaza and the West Bank, in Lebanon, Jordan, and Syria, pending a comprehensive, just, and peaceful solution on the basis of international law and agreements, and of course, all relevant United Nations resolutions. Excellencies, this is not a matter of charity. This is about responsibility, about upholding human dignity and human rights. This is about keeping the promise we made through the 2030 Agenda to leave no one behind. This is about solidarity with our Palestinian sisters and brothers. I could give you many more reasons. In fact, two of them are sitting in this hall. Hanan Abu Ashbe and Hatem, Hatem Hamduna, two talented 14 years old from the West Bank and Gaza respectively, who were elected to represent 126,000 UNRWA students in the agency-wide student parliament, and who both, I understand, love poetry, as I do. And then there is Noor, the mathematics whiz who lives in the Balata refugee camp, and Khalil in Lebanon, who is determined that this visual impairment will not stand in the way of his dreams. But I am sure, Excellencies, that I do not need to convince you of the value of UNRWA's work. Your presence here today sends a powerful message that you care and that you're willing to act, of course. 
I would now give the floor to the Secretary General and the Commission Commissioner General, and I look forward to hearing your generous pledges to ensure that UNRWA carry on its vital work. Let me, quote, let me only close by quoting another UNRWA student, 15-year-old Jamila, who won the 2019 Inspirational Messages for, context, for a Contest. And I quote her, why don't we leave aside malice, animosity, and hate, and search for love inside our hearts before it is too late? I thank you 